In this video, I'd like to continue talking about the modulus or the absolute value of complex numbers by deriving a specific formula for finding the absolute value of any complex number z with real part a and imaginary part b. And remember that absolute value is essentially just asking how far is that number from the origin. So if we have some complex number z and we plot it on this complex plane, we are just finding its distance from the origin when we're finding its absolute value. And with this number z, we can plot it anywhere on the complex plane. So let's say we put it in quadrant two, but this derivation would work in any of the quadrants. And we can say that this is the real part of z, and we call that a, and we can say this is the imaginary part of z, which we can call b times i, or let me write it the other way, i times b. And we can plot this point right here. So at this point, we just need to find the distance that this point z is from the origin here. And that distance we call the modulus or we call it the absolute value. And we can draw a line from our point to the origin. And essentially we just need to figure out the length of this line. And we can notate that the length of this line is the absolute value of a plus i times b or the absolute value of z. And the general strategy is to decompose this into a right triangle. So we can drop a vertical line here that's perpendicular to this real axis and construct a horizontal line here that's parallel to the real axis. And by doing so, we end up with this right triangle. And we are trying to find the length of the hypotenuse. So if we know the lengths of the vertical and horizontal components, then we can use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out the length of this hypotenuse. And the components of this right triangle, well, let's start with the horizontal. It is A units long, and the vertical is B units high. So we can use the Pythagorean theorem now, since remember that for a right triangle, we have A squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, where a and b, these are the legs of the right triangle, and c is the hypotenuse of the right triangle. And for the legs, it doesn't matter which we call which, but let's just stick with the same lettering. So we have that a squared plus b squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared, and the hypotenuse is this absolute value, a plus ib, and we will square that. Now to find the modulus or the absolute value, we just need to take a square root of each side. And since these are general, we can't simplify this further. So taking a square root of each side of this equation, we can simplify the right hand side to just the absolute value of a plus ib, which remember is just the absolute value of our complex number z. And on the left hand side, we have the square root of a squared plus b squared. And this right here is a formula that we can use to find the modulus or absolute value of any complex number. And we can test this. Let's say, for example, that we have the complex number minus three plus six i. And just matching this up to our formula, comparing it to our general complex number, we can see that a is negative 3 and b is 6. And we can call this z1, the complex number z1. And finding the absolute value or the modulus of z1, we just plug everything into our formula. We have a squared, which is minus 3 squared plus b squared or 6 squared. And simplifying, minus 3 times minus 3 is positive 9. 6 times 6 is 36. Adding these together, we get the square root of 45, which actually can be simplified since this is really just 9 times 5. 
and we can take a square root of nine. So if we separate this into a product of square roots, since we have a product on the inside, we have root nine multiplied by root five, and the square root of nine we know is three, meaning that the modulus, or the absolute value of this complex number is three times the square root of five, and just keep in mind that the absolute value or modulus of this is just asking how far is this point from the origin? Or another way to think about it is in terms of vectors. Since remember that a complex number is really just a vector from the origin. We have minus three for the real part and six i for the imaginary part. So it's about right up there. And we can define complex numbers as a vector, essentially an arrow pointing away from the origin to that point. And this arrow has a length, this vector has a length, and it has a direction. It has some angle from this real axis, though we will discuss the angle in a later video. But the length of the vector, often called the magnitude, is just this modulus or this absolute value. So this is something we will talk about in later videos, but it does come up frequently, this need to find the length of the line between the complex number and the origin. And for this specific example, the length of this vector here, this absolute value of the complex number, its modulus is three times the square root of five.